to get around there quickly, you're still paying another toll. Many people moved west of the Beltway because it was lower cost housing, better place, more suburban, to bring up their kids. Now, I have a concern. Most of these families, if they know about this type of thing, and I'd say the middle class in the future and the congestion here, Mr. Pope, if you'd wrap up, please. People away. It's not a business user community, uh, a user location for new businesses to come into the area, although we have predominantly federal jobs here. Thank you, sir. Um, Kathy Mallard and is it K Kong Fu? Uh, and then the next is uh, Anita Grazer. Uh, welcome. Good evening. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Unfortunately, we had a PowerPoint presentation to offer with my comments. I'm helping this wonderful student from Virginia Tech across the way here who's a graduate student working in the computer sciences department and he and his uh, uh, professor, Dr. Liu, who could not be here tonight, have developed a very effective means of monitoring uh, the public sentiment, especially the com commuters, uh, using the social media platforms. Uh, we did distribute some copies of the PowerPoint slot. You don't have it available for them? Yeah, if you could distribute it quick, you can't distribute it quickly, okay. Anyway, over the course of the last many years, uh, Dr. Liu has been studying I-66, and over the course of the last two years with Mr. Fu, they have worked with the DC Department of Transportation to integrate commuter sentiments by taking postings on social media, especially regar well, regarding issues of traffic congestion, conditions, metro use, disruptive events, et cetera. This is done by a social media monitoring system. It's very extremely effective and I, we would enjoin you to please take a look at it uh, before you make too many more decisions. Um, the motivation behind this, the development of the system is to help transportation operation agencies and their respective decision makers collect commuters' intentions and sentiments, meaning their very strong feelings. <laughs> Traditional questionnaire surveys really suffer because uh, of sample insufficiency and lack real-time authenticity. At any rate, um, we, have we, we do have this PowerPoint presentation to distribute to you. I'm going to turn it over to you for a minute uh, to talk about the sentiment analysis. Okay, sorry. Um, we're trying to use uh, natural language processing uh, technique in, in the textual mining part to extract the opinions of the uh, users and commuters on, on, the, on the road. So one application is called sentiment analysis. So uh, we for showing the slides, uh, we can um, plot the commuters' sentiment uh, fluctuation and to see um, what kind of opinions, uh, sentiment there they have on, on a specific uh, topic. And some other analysis is we can use uh, natural language processing to, to extract the topics out of the uh, uh, social network platform like Twitter and uh, news comment sections. Um, so we can generate this um, topic um, pl word yeah, cloud. Mr. Mr. Fu, here's what I would I would suggest because I, I'm interested in your topic. Uh, Mr. Kilpatrick is a, is also a Hokie uh, from Virginia Tech, but I, I'm interested. And so, if we would like to get your card and we will follow up with you because this is more than a we can cover here. But you, appreciate you coming, and I promise you we will we will take a look at this. All right, thanks, sir. Yeah. All right. Thank, you. Thank you, Charlie. If you'll make sure, it, I mean, the, we've got it here. We'll follow up. Uh, Ms. Uh, Anita Grazer, and then we have James Mosley would be next. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Secretary Lane and members of uh, Commonwealth Transportation Board. I am Anita Grazer, immediate past president of the Committee for Dulles. I'm here on behalf of the Committee for Dulles. The committee supports additional lane and transit capacity both outside and inside the Beltway. The need for additional lane capacity on 66 
has been there for almost 20 years. Congestion in the corridor is not limited to just peak rush hour direction. It is often worse in the evening and in on the weekends. Inside the Beltway, an additional lane would benefit both automobile drivers and current tra bus transit riders by providing faster travel time, better access to and from jobs, both in Arlington, the district, and as well as the western um, communities of Tyson's, Dulles, Reston, and beyond. It will keep traffic on I-66 where it belongs and not on neighborhood streets. Without additional capacity, even with a HOV hot lane toll proposal, this portion of 66 will continue to be congested. The Committee for Dulles urges that a defined time slash revenue trigger be included to ensure that added capacity is not pushed off to the distant future. The need for a new lane is now. Also, we'd like to comment that I-66 inside the Beltway connects to Dulles Airport. The road system, 66, the Dulles Connector, and the Dulles Airport Access Road provide a key transportation link. Dulles is beginning to regain the passengers it lost after the recent airline consolidations. Imposing HOV restrictions and hot lane tolling on I-66 inside the Beltway for airport bound passengers may affect this turnaround. We urge caution as you move forward on the I-66 uh, proposal as it relates to the airport. Thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, we have James Mosley and then Bruce Kudarzi. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is James Mosley and I'm a resident here in Herndon. Um, I originally grew up out in rural Virginia, moved here about 12 years ago, so I have seen both uh, the increase in traffic throughout the entire state. I know that VDOT needs to definitely uh, have a focus on a lot of the areas, but with uh, specifically 66, I do, I do commute into the city and I just simply see a lot of inefficiencies, lack of enforcement, um, the lack of a uh, simple changes to HOV rules that could be done to basically, you know, use the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid. There's really nothing better than that when it comes right down to it. Um, usually common sense should prevail. Uh, we, you know, can look and stand over top and overlook of a bridge and actually look and see what traffic is going on throughout the day. And you would understand that when you drive in in the morning, the HOV too pretty much works, but HO, there is no HOV outbound uh, out of the city in the morning or evening when the reverse commute. Uh, tolling turn, turns 66 into a road for the elite. And I just wanna say that most people, we are not Donald Trump. So please uh, look at your plans because we all still need to be able to commute into 66. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, next, we have Bruce Godorzi and then Alan Munchnik. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Bruce Godorzi with the City of Manassas, Department of Public Works. Uh, I'm here to just present the resolution that was passed by our city councils for the record. And thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alan Munchnik, and then uh, we have Tom Duncan. Uh, good evening, Mr. Secretary and members of the board. I'm Alan Munchnik with the Arlington Coalition for Sensible Transportation, uh, or ACST. Since 1999, ACST has um, advocated wiser, not wider, traffic management and multimodal improvements to I-66 inside the Beltway to most effectively move more people, increase ride sharing and transit use, uh, reduce travel times, expand travel choices, and minimize highway congestion. 
We commend uh, Governor McCall and Secretary Lane for moving forward with both Transform I-66 projects. While we oppose expanding I-66 highway capacity as generally unproductive, we acknowledge the current federal mandate against tolling existing general purpose highway lanes outside the Beltway and the need to, for a compromise to achieve reasonable consensus. That said, both I-66 projects were necessitated by the Commonwealth's de decades-long failure to effectively manage I-66 as a multimodal corridor with metro rail. Inside the Beltway, the HOB Oxby requirements were progressively reduced from four to two, while the HOB hours stayed constant and an exemption for a single occupant clean fuel vehicles was added. Outside the Beltway, an inherently flawed, unseparated HOV lane was built. More recently, VDOT's development of the Inside the Beltway project has been a public relations nightmare, uh, needlessly generating strong fears, controversy, and objections throughout North Virginia. When VDOT's I-66 multimodal sketch planning study concluded in 2012, VDOT failed to initiate a follow-up public process to further study the, 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 to further refine the study's recommendations in advance of a specific implementation project. Instead, VDOT was silent until late 2014 when an implementation project was suddenly announced without details or information on adverse potential impacts and the proposal had to be modified repeatedly in response to widespread uh, public opposition. We offer the following recommendations going forward. One, since the tolls inside the Beltway are primarily to prevent uh, congestion, set the toll price at each gantry to zero whenever tra current traffic volumes are below the highway's capacity. Two, establish a public process for adjusting the inside the Beltway hours and directions of tolls and HOV restrictions as well as any restoration of HOV 3. The objective should be to keep I-66 permanently uncongested during peak travel times while moving the most people by ride sharing and transit. As area motorists become accustomed to toll express lanes and easy pass transponders are widely used, there may be considerable public support in the future to expand the hours of congestion management on 66. Three, phase the uh, reconstruction of I-66 outside the Beltway to avoid any need for a private financing partner to maximize the use of toll revenue for multimodal improvements and avoid any penalties for competing transit improvements. Thank you for this opportunity to comment on this vital project. Thank you very much, sir. Tom Duncan and then Debbie Sheets. That's fine, yes, sir. Thank you. My name is Tom Duncan. I'm a 30-year resident of Arlington County. I'm just representing myself. Uh, one question that you often hear in relation to this project is, what problem are we trying to solve? According to the state's project team, there is a federal requirement that an average speed of 40 miles per hour be maintained on HOV facilities. They have not explained the consequences if that requirement isn't met, but the implication is that funding could be lost. It is also said that objection, an objective of the project is to provide a better, more consistent commute, especially for folks coming in from the outer suburbs in the morning and going home in the evening. It's clear that this cannot be accomplished without reducing the number of vehicles on 66. So where will all these people go? Most Arlington residents are concerned that it's going to put more traffic on secondary roads like Lee Highway, Wilson Boulevard, etc. I have not met anyone who believes the project team's charts that project minimal impact to the secondary roads. In fact, there was a newspaper article stating that the Arlington County officials are planning for significant impacts. Another question you often hear about this project is, is it a done deal? The state project team insists that it's not, but they never refer to any aspect of the project in the conditional tense as to what may or would happen. It's always the way that things will be. In some of the town hall meetings, citizens have brought up some reasonable strategies of how the project might truly achieve its goals, and they are met with the refrain of, that's not part of the plan. Not that it, their suggestion was out of scope, just that it's not part of the plan. If you're really holding these public forums to solicit feedback, why not take the time to actually consider the feedback? This entire process has the feel of people going through the motions. It's disrespectful and insulting to the taxpayers in Northern Virginia. During one of the town hall meetings, the fatal flaw of this project was revealed. If the point of the project is to improve the utilization of the facility, then why let single occupant vehicles use it during rush hour? That's when the story from the state project team completely changes and we learn that we have a huge HOV enforcement issue. 
It was 